Welcome to you, friends. This is Barb Gully from Barb's Tea Service, and today we're kicking off our first podcast, but first tea, courtesy on TV studios. For our inaugural podcast, we thought we'd start with a little intro into what we do, some tea basics, what to add to tea, and we'd also include a highlight of past, present, and future tea adventures. But first, tea. Today's selection, I brewed up some Earl Grey because one, it's my favorite, and two, it's a nice lighter black tea to serve in the afternoon. And to introduce my special guest today, Chris Gully. He's here to share some of his tea comments as well as provided much needed extra technical expertise. So Chris, what is your favorite tea and what are you drinking today? Well, I think uh, I'm pretty much a basic, I'm team uh, Earl Grey by and large. Um, and whenever we go out for tea, um, like afternoon tea is pretty much our go-to. Although I'll mention, <clears throat> uh, and we'll probably talk about this later in the podcast, was that, uh, what, about three weeks ago, we were at a place called Lady Mendel's Tea in, um, in um, uh, Gramercy Park in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And um, really for the first time, so it was a great, uh, great experience. Uh, it was an afternoon tea. But one thing they did a little bit differently was they had tea pairings with uh, each of the, the levels. There's right. about, I don't know, three, four, five different teas right, that you right. could uh, sample, which I thought was pretty good. And so we started off with the Earl Grey and then uh, we went through with some lighter teas, like there was a mint flavored tea and then um, then kind of a, I think there was kind of a fruit tea and then it and something else. And so so I, I it opened up my, um, you know, my world, my tea world a bit. <laughs> so um, I might uh, might uh, check that out in the future. Okay, great. So for today, you're having the, the standard Earl Grey. Absolutely. Yes, but that experience at Lady Mendel's, that really did uh, force us out of our afternoon tea rut. Our go-to is always Earl Grey. So that was really fun. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Okay, so again, for our first podcast, we thought we'd start at the beginning. Okay, so again, we thought we would just start at the beginning, and specifically the beginning of Barb's Tea Service. Uh, just a little bit more about who we are and what we do. So we've been in business almost 20 years, and we're primarily a tea education business. And along with daughter Rachel Gully Brown and other team members, we do tea tastings, tea pairings, and tea etiquette. I am certified by the Protocol School of Washington to teach e tea etiquette, and I usually need a little sip of tea after that mouthful. We also do tea talks, such as Gilded Age, Downton Abbey, Bridgerton, and our ostentatious tea, which is about our favorite author, Jane Austen. Yes. And uh, I should mention that uh, we... Uh and are, we've done a lot of traveling to the UK over the years, and uh, most recently we uh, uh, did a lot of uh, Jane Austen research. We stayed in Bath and uh, stayed at the uh, the house or the uh, the townhouse where Jane Austen stayed. I think uh, from 1801 to 1804, and that was uh, interesting. And then we took a tour uh, with a uh, a properly cantankerous uh, <laughs> gentleman who gave us basically a, a tour of of the Bridgerton uh, television sites that w took uh, that were actually filmed in in uh, uh, in Bath as stand-ins for areas of London, and I should mention that um, Barb won first place <laughs> in the um, in the uh, 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 trivia uh, right. contest that yes. he gave. I think it was a, a Cadbury chocolate bar right uh, but I should also mention I came in second and there was a grand total of two people participating in that particular contest right usually we don't disclose <laughs> how many people we were up against right. and uh, chocolate's always a great motivator right but uh, yeah um, yeah good point so we we do do a lot of travel we travel a lot throughout the US and England other parts of, of Europe and then we incorporate that into our 
Tea Talks and want to let you know that for anything that we talk about, <clears throat> we will also include that in, there's a couple other places you can look. Our, we have a, a website and we also have a blog and that's at barbsteashot.blogspot.com and we'd love if you'd visit us there too. In our blog, we talk about, oh my goodness, I got to have a little more tea. (laughs) Okay, so in our blog, we talk about tea, of course, but we also talk about other things that I like to say are tea adjacent. They're topics slash obsessions. And recent and often reoccurring themes are lemon curd, sticky toffee pudding, knife rests, and salt cellars, which I know is a lot of exciting topics to throw out uh, right now. I don't know. Is that too much for the first? It it sounds right, (laughs) but we'll see. (laughs) Okay. All right. Well, let's get back to our roots and some of the items we said we'd cover today. So first, different types of tea. There are four basic types of tea. Uh, There's some subcategories, but these are the main ones. Black, oolong, green, and white. And the biggest demarcation of these teas is the oxidation period. And that's the time from when the leaf is plucked from the plant to when it's processed. So here's a good example of oxidation. Chris, if I took a bite of the apple that's sitting over here on the desk and left it here for a while, what would happen to the exposed flesh of that apple? Well, I think it would uh, attract fruit flies and then turn brown. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm not going to leave it out too long, but yes, um, <laughs> that's exactly right. It would turn brown. And that same principle works for tea. And black has the longest oxidation period. That's what generally gives this tea category its darker color and stronger taste. That's also why it's considered to be the only tea that can handle any additions, like milk, sugar, or lemon. Chris, is there anything in particular you like to add to your tea? Well, I'm basically, uh, um, I'll add my milk, and I'll uh, go dig around for a couple of uh, lumps of sugar out of the sugar bowl and add that. And occasionally, occasionally lemon. Okay. And and you like to use the sugar tongs, don't you? I do. That's a... Uh, it's, uh, that's a great thing. You're very refined. <laughs> and I'm really happy to hear that you put milk in, not cream and not half and half. That can really be too overpowering for tea. It's, it's, it's a more delicate drink, lots of nuances. It's not a cup of coffee, although we do occasionally go to the dark side. That's right. Okay, so I'm going to share another tea edition that has created a bit of a brouhaha between the U.S. and U.K. Can you imagine such a thing happening? No, I can't. <laughs> and uh, further, um, you know, uh, we, um, we are always entertained uh, by our friends in the U.K., by their reactions to various things American. Um, so, for example, there's that little incident in Boston Harbor where uh, certain <laughs> items were thrown overboard. Uh-huh. Um, the uh, we have this little uh, American Revolution. In the meantime, the War of 1812. We have to add to that list. Although they did get to burn the White House, which I guess was fun. And then the latest, um, you know, uh, horrible thing that's happened uh, to Britain from America is Meghan Markle. Okay. Well, that's. A bit controversial. <laughs> Maybe it's a little more controversial than what I was going to bring up. But um, yeah, okay. So I think what you're you're saying here is there's been precedence. There is. This isn't the first time U.S. and U.K. have come to blows. No. Okay. Well, here's what uh, happened earlier this year regarding an ingredient to add to tea. A chemistry professor from Bryn Mawr, Dr. Michelle Frankel, recently wrote a book called Steeped. The Chemistry of Tea, and uh, I will just let everyone know, I just got my copy in yesterday. So in the blog, we're going to do a Tuesday Tea and Tomes, so stay tuned. Nice. But what in this book, among other things, 
what Dr. Frankel suggested is that when the tea is bitter, add a little bit of salt. Can you imagine that? <laughs> well, as seemingly innocuous as this advice may be, many Brits across the pond were outraged. They took offense to someone recommending adding salt to their national drink, and from a yank, no less. So, the U.S. Embassy in London felt they had to get ahead of this, and they had to address it post-haste. So they issued a statement to defuse the situation. I'm not going to read the whole statement, but here's a, a little excerpt. We want to ensure the good people of the UK that the unthinkable notion of adding salt to Britain's national drink is not official United States policy and never will be. That's great. But then they continued. The U.S. Embassy will continue to make tea in the proper way by microwaving it. My gosh. I know. That's unbelievable. And how do you prepare your tea? Um, I do it, um, I think, the right way. I uh, don't microwave it. I put it in a proper kettle. Oh, you're very good. Okay, so no shame over here. <laughs> All right, and if you want to get more details about this new book and author, I do have an exclusive interview with Dr. Frankel in a blog, in our blog from a few weeks ago. Okay, so let's move on to something I think will be a little less controversial, but uh, <laughs> who knows when a, a little bit of salt added to, to tea can create such a tempest in a teapot. Ooh. All right. Uh, as mentioned earlier, Bar Tea Service presents several historical themed teas, and currently one of our most popular is our ostentatious tea, and it's all about Jane Austen. Jane's hit another peak of popularity, and I think that's partly due to some of the recent film adaptations and the Netflix series Bridgerton. Although Bridgerton isn't quite the Austen prose, it is set in the same time period, so it's the Regency period in England, and shares a lot of common themes. And as Chris mentioned, we uh, had an extended stay in Bath earlier, uh, or in the fall, and we stayed in an Austin residence, and we took the Bridgerton tour because much of Bridgerton was filmed in Bath. It stood in as uh, the London right. of its day. And also we had afternoon tea at the pump room. And that's where Jane had tea. It was a place that was considered a place to see and be seen. So, Chris, did you feel seen at the pump room? Um, I, I have to say yes. Um, I'm not sure by whom, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was uh, it was a very interesting um, stay. So, uh, the pump room, uh, uh, the bath is literally the site of some ancient Roman baths. And uh, there's uh, like mineralized, hot mineralized water that kind of flows through and, and uh, people have been using that as a spa for, for years. So they had kind of this interesting little uh, fountain there where you could kind of get a little paper cup and drink the water. It was not good for tea, I can tell you that. <laughs> but uh, that was interesting. Uh, that was an interesting little, uh, little spot to stay. And did you feel rejuvenated after that? I, water? Absolutely. Okay, I thought so. Okay, so that was a, I mean, overall, it was, it was a fantastic trip. Right. And we have incorporated some of those um, slides into our upcoming talks with Bridgerton and Jane Austen. And we do have a Jane Austen tea talk coming up next month in April. And we'd advise you to check out our website at barbsteaservice.com for on our events page for all upcoming tea talks and uh it's but it's not just england where we find all our jane austen treasures just uh what a week and a half ago we were in new york and we paid a visit to the morgan library this was once the home of jp morgan so it kind of combined a lot of things uh that i love gilded age jane austen anyway we got the scoop on their collection of jane austen letters and manuscripts which we're going to divulge in an upcoming podcast. 
So hold on to your hat. And definitely, if you are in New York, uh, put that on your list of a place to stay. It's a little, little, uh, uh, it's a little out of the way, but but uh, well worth your while. And it wasn't too far from Lady Mendel. It was it? not. Okay. And we were also in New York for another reason. Uh, we got to see Dick and Angel Strawbridge present their Dare to Do It show, all about their Escape to the Chateau series. I think you enjoyed that show too, Chris. I did. That was, uh, you know, we we were fans of the show. I think we watched it was like eight or nine seasons, mm -hmm. and uh, they're very, you know, uh, we watched the show. They're they're very, uh, you know, seem like very kind to people and and uh, very easygoing and uh, but very, you know, very smart and, and ambitious as well. And uh, so that was. Um, uh, that was very interesting. Uh, should I share the, the meet and greet part? Absolutely. Well, so after um, you had the opportunity to uh, to get in line and, and just, you know, get a few minutes with them. So uh, uh, we, we finally got to, uh, to uh, meet them. And um, so uh, Dick Strawbridge said to me, and I get the impression, you know, a lot of husbands are, are maybe not, you know, they're there because they've been asked to be there. Or they're not maybe <laughs> fans of the show. So he was, you know, being friendly and asked if I was, uh, you know, a, uh, as he called it, a drag along. And I said, no, in fact, uh, I was there as the arm candy. And he thought that was great <laughs> and, and, and told Angel all about that. So that, that got quite a reaction. Right. So that you were known as the arm candy for the rest of the evening. That's right. Uh, when we spent time with Dick and Angel. Also want to mention that I did do an interview with Angel that was in uh, the current Tea Time magazine. Yep. And we covered it in the blog as well. So you can see some pictures from that. And we're going to do a little bit more about that in another upcoming blog. Because uh, we had so much fun at that Dare to Do It tour presentation and I got to uh, I've got a shout out to my new BFF Nadine who I met at the at the show and she was gifted one of the stage props one of those six foot tall bow ferns spray painted gold of course and when Angel found out that Nadine was uh, a New York resident she said why don't you take this home <laughs> and so Nadine took it home with her and I got to take pictures of her stuffing that into a New York taxi. And um, we bonded over that, and Nadine and I are having afternoon tea the next time I'm in New York. Hmm. Well, oh, is it time for uh, another pot of tea? I think it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hear that tea kettle. And it's signaling us to wrap up our first But First Tea podcast. And we want to thank On TV for their time. And you can find our podcast along with other really interesting podcasts on the On TV podcast website. And we'd love to hear from all of you. If there's something tea or tea adjacent <laughs> you'd like to hear about, let us know. Send us an email, barb at barbsteaservice.com. And if you know anyone we should feature on uh, upcoming podcasts, again, let us know that as well. I want to uh, uh, thank everybody for listening to our inaugural podcast. And, of course, we're going to go through a few bumps and uh yeah, it's a learning curve <laughs> it's a learning curve but as the great philosopher our, of our time howard jones has said things can only get better there you go so i want to thank my very special guest today arm candy and technical aid chris gully thank you chris you got it and thank you all for listening again and we will appreciate you staying